Greetings. I'm Reverend Alvin Dwilley, Associate Pastor of Shrine No. 1 in Detroit, Michigan. Thank you for joining me for today's devotional, which will center upon the spiritual virtue of goodness. This morning's thought touched home with me this past week as I was attending to the yard. I was trying to repair a badly worn lawn. I surveyed my circumstance. I was confronted with a patchwork of weeds, grass, and dry dirt. I began to spread dirt and seed on what appeared to be dry, hard ground. The ground was so parched it was cracking in areas. I wondered if what I was doing was good enough to save this lawn and whether the grass would ever grow again. This reminded me of the parable of the sower, Luke 8, 5 through 8. A sower went out to sow his seed. Now as he sowed, some fell on the edge of the path and was trampled on, and the birds of the air ate it up. Some seed fell on rock, and when it came up, it withered away, having no moisture. Some seed fell in the middle of thorns, and the thorns grew with it and choked it. And some seed fell into good soil and grew and produced its crop a hundredfold. Saying this, he cried, anyone who had ears for listening should listen. Family, I was attempting to sow good seed. Kaumba, creativity, one of the Nguzo Sapa principles celebrated during Kwanzaa, represents our potential to do always as much as we can in the way that we can in order to leave our community more beautiful and beneficial than we inherited it. Its implication is that we do the best we can do and we are being the best that we can be in order to make the world a better place than when we came upon it. Best and better are synonymous with good, and on the Christian journey, we are to live a lifestyle that is good in the eyes of God. God being the ultimate measure of good. The psalmist writes, For Yahweh is good, his faithful love is everlasting, his constancy from age to age. Being good has gotten a bad rap in recent times. It has been regarded as being weak or even unable to withstand the evil forces of the world. The rise in admiration of terms such as thuggish, hood rat, bad boy speak to the acceptance of such expressions. But these phrases mirror the state of chaos in the world. But as best self-Christians, we understand that for the people of God, we are in the world, but consciously we remove our mind, body, spirit from the calamity of the world. The term good or goodness can be interpreted to mean a physical good, as in the presentation of material things, like a nice car, pretty flowers. It can also mean morally good, usually with regards to people, their correct behavior or positive energy. Taking it one step further can also mean spiritually good, being pleasing to God. One Lutheran minister wrote, Goodness is love in action, love with its hand on the plow, love with the burden on its back, love following his footsteps who went about continually doing good. His footsteps inspired by scripture. His referring to Jesus in Acts 10.37, which says, You know what happened all over Judea, how Jesus of Nazareth, began in Galilee. After John had been preaching baptism, God had anointed him with the Holy Spirit and with power. And because God was with him, Jesus went about doing good and curing all who had fallen into the power of the devil. Jesus, our stand bearer and revolutionary example, teaches us that doing good is doing all we can, even under the looming shadow of the cross. We, like him, must continue to do all we can to liberate our people. Doing good means seeking out and providing manna to the hungry, water for those in thirst, healing to those sick and shut in. The cosmic intelligence that formed all manner of life looked upon its creation. And scripture says God saw all God had made and indeed it was very good. Brothers and sisters, I'm following in Jesus' footsteps and attempting to bring good to your doorstep. In this time of COVID-19, I realize it may be difficult to see good, but I would ask you to look again 
Uh, this time, perhaps using your Jesus lens. It was Jesus who touched the leper, who anointed the blind, who healed the sick, all because God had anointed him with the Holy Spirit and with power. And because God was with him, Jesus went about doing good. I'm not sure what will become of the lawn I attended to, but I added additional soil and I watered it some more. I will do all I can to revive this lawn, hoping that it will be good enough. Much like the Christian struggle, the lawn will need to be attended to regularly to make sure no weeds sprout up. Proper care needs to be in place. In the struggle of good versus evil, this same kind of care needs to happen. Overcoming the pull of the world on our lives won't take place in an instant. Goodness won't happen without struggle. It needs to be attended to on a regular basis. Our lives should be conducted in the spirit of goodness. Goodness is not something that moves in a crisis, but is nurtured over time, so that in a crisis we are not caught off guard. During this time of physical separation, there is still good that we can do. In today's virtual environment, we are afforded the means to be together while still apart. A concept that may be familiar and that piggybacks upon the metaphysical construct of a unified energy field. That we live, breathe, and have our total being. We can reach out through prayer. We can call, text, Zoom, Skype, and depending upon where we are, pass one another, keeping a social distance. In this moment, together, I hope I have done some good. I leave you to contemplate this question. What good can I do to move the world into conformity to the will of God? What good can I do to move the world into conformity to the will of God. Ashe, and until next time, amen.